So I was a little worried about um, the hacker box thing moving their shipping to uh, to not ship internationally. But you know, I get so much crap delivered to me at my post office box down in the states that it probably doesn't make much of a difference for me to drive down and get the crap from there. What the hell did they do this time? But anyways, yes, it's at uh, favorite time of the month again when we get our. Hacker box, what is in here this time? Yeah, of course, there's oh, multi length jumpers. Uh, and now version three, okay, it's already got the uh, jump, the uh, and version three. What voltage? What voltage? Uh, oh. What is on there? An 80 mega. Let's take a quick look. Maybe turn some light on. 328p. Okay, so your standard Arduino right there. Another charging cable. I could go into business. A micro SD card reader that fits on a keychain. Oh. Now it'd be handy to make something out of out of that. Wait, another one, two of them. Hmm. Oh, um, 3D position uh, sensors. These guys are kind of fun. What is this? This is the HMC 583L. So this is a three-axis. Is it accelerometer or gyroscope? I forget which. I think it's a gyroscope. But um, anyway, so it looks like we're going to be doing something that um, orients us in space. Oh, good. Another uh, GPS chip. I wonder if we're building a, a drone because, you know, you need an accelerometer. You need a GPS. Well, you don't need a GPS, but no. Which GPS chip is this? What are we building? What are we building? Uh, is this the... Who makes this? I don't recognize this at all. It's also got a little dent in the uh, in the cover there. I don't know what that's going to do, but it's a 1575RAB. Uh, uh, a Neo EW GPS. I'm not sure who makes that chip, but we will look it up. Okay, so we've got a GPS chip. We've got a knockoff. Well, we've got an micro SD adapter card okay so for loading programs onto something reading and writing from something a solderless breadboard and uh, Kingston Kingston technologies uh, micro SD class 10 what is that it's in Chinese so um, They've gone to the trouble of making some sort of a holographic sticker on here. Don't even tell me how big the card is. Now, not that I believe it, because um, micro SD cards are um, are notoriously fakeable. Um, you can get them in all. Apparently, in Shenzhen, you can get them um, written to whatever size you want. Really. Um, inside of the firmware. These things are amazing actually. Um, they have a microcontroller in them because it is cheaper to put a microcontroller in them than it is to bin these chips into different sizes. Oh, and I see it's a 16 gig. Well, at least that's what it says on the front. It's cheaper to put a microcontroller on here to run an OS so that it manages bad blocks inside of the chip than it is to actually bin these into the correct sizes. So what that means is you can burn a microcontroller onto this thing that, or you can burn something onto this microcontroller that turns this th into a small computer. So you put that into your USB drive and it runs an operating system or, um, well, uh, running an operating system, that's, that's going too far. But you can, you can program one of these things to do things other than feed up data, like go and you know, read for, look for files on, on a hard drive that this, on the computer that this is plugged into. These are such an immense 
security vector that you have to be aware of. You have to be aware of it. Um, anytime you stick a, a, an SD card in your computer, if you don't know where that came from, you might as well assume, well, actually, you might as well assume if you know where it came from, if you bought it from a store, you might as well assume that there is malware on this thing that, or spyware or something that's gonna, that, that could bite you in the ass. So if you have anything at all that, you're, that is sensitive on the machine that you're plugging this into, consider it um, potentially compromised whenever you put an SD card in it, a reader in it. It's amazing what, uh, um, what, you, uh, what you'll find out. So um, uh, the hardware hacker, hacker Bunny Wang's book, um, goes into some detail about how these chips are actually constructed and, and what, uh, what the technology is that goes into um, how they, um, they burn the, um, the ROM sizes. Maybe, maybe I'll go into a few of these and I'll, I'll uh, show some of, the, um, some of the binary dumps of the, of the uh, not the firmwares, but at least the, uh, the data that it's being reported to the OS and, and, and take a look at that. But <laughs> yeah, um, micro SD cards, I, I had no idea. And now they are all suspect to me. But anyways, um, this is probably fine. And then what else do we have? <gasps> no, really? I just ordered myself one of these. Oh, these are handy little um, shop tools. I'm not sure if I ordered this one or, or which one I ordered, but it um, it has all kinds of neat things like um, hole sizes for um, sizing up wire gauges, um, some circuit symbols, some footprints, so that you can get a sense of what the different um, uh, surface mount footprint sizes are, um, trace widths, um, and then on the back you have BGA pin spacings as well as quad flat pack um, pin spacing so that you can get a sense of what 0.4 and 0.5 millimeter pitch is. 0.4 millimeters. Like that's just insane. I, I've done some um, uh, 08 and 06 um, pitch um, soldering. I've got a couple of 05 chips that need to be soldered but when you get down to 04 and then forget ball grid arrays. That's just insanity. Totally insanity. So anyways, you may have seen a video that I did about the similar ruler that comes from AVE that has um, all kinds of um, nice similar, similar, uh, similar stuff on it. I mean, for, for normal folks where we use um, fasteners that are both English and metric, um, and we've got gap width and thou, but he also has on the other side, you know, the, the shop vernacular for, uh, how, how small a, uh, a gap is, uh, relative to something that many people will be familiar with. Anyways, so yeah, okay, great. Now I've got, um, a couple of these. Oh, well, one for the shop, one for the lab. I don't know, maybe one for my my briefcase. Whatever. We'll see. Now, what do we have here? Forging Elite Hardware Hackers. Uh, track my hack. Ooh. Maybe that's the... Oh, no. It's just a GPS tracker to put... Yeah, that's what we're going to make. We're going to make a um, some sort of a device that we can stash for, some, for people to try and find. Or, you know, release something into the wild. Um, built on top of a um, Arduino clone, a GPS chip. Maybe send it out into the wild and see um, who finds it. So it's they're saying this is a Neo 6M. Yeah, pretty common, pretty common uh, US or um, a pretty common GPS chip. And this is I'm pretty sure that this is just a three-axis accelerometer. But um, yeah, we'll see what sort of projects they can come up with. The first thing that I think of is this This right here builds you a, a, a quadcopter. Um, well, I mean, you need some motors and you need, uh, need some batteries and you need a radio, but um, that um, is a quadcopter right there. Anyways, yeah, um, that'll be fun to, um, to futz around with. So we will take a look at the Hackerbox website and see what um, little uh, projects they have in store 
for us, but um, a nice little assortment of goodies. And like I said, I was a little worried about um, the, the shipping uh, to international destinations going to be messing with me, but I get my toys early. Um, it's cheaper. Uh, as long as I can manage the uh, to batch a number of different things for pickup, it's not too much of a hassle. Anyways, uh, let's go check the website and see what they've got us um, got us working on. Okay, so I'm just not a devious um, bastard, apparently, because as soon as I saw the website, it was like, yeah, no, that's totally obvious now. Um, where'd my? Uh, there it is. This is a GPS tracking device right here that we built. <clears throat> so, so these are bulky, but I mean, if you're putting it on a car or um, giving somebody a like a fancy headlight to put on their bike, or if you're able to um, sell them some luggage or lend them your suitcase or you know gps antennas are bulky so i mean this is about the size that you're going to expect a a tracker to um to have but essentially you have a sd card that you can write data to you've got a microcontroller a accelerometer or uh, magnetometer I forget which um, doesn't well it would be it would be better if it was an accelerometer because then you could use data coming from this thing when it starts to move to wake up your chip which would then um, uh, start logging you know connect to the satellites and start logging where this little device is actually going so <laughs> it's all very, uh, hmm. I don't know, James Bondy way, I guess. I don't know, or creepy. If you want to creep on somebody and figure out where they're going when you're, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so we need we need a way of, of writing data. We need a way of waking this guy up when it moves. So that's this thing. We need a way of knowing where it is. That's this thing. And then we need, yeah, like I said, we need a place to write data. So there you go. That is your GPS tracking bug. And then you can just pull your, um, if you can gain regain access to the device, to the device, you can get your um, your data off. The nice thing about it is that if you can RF shield it properly so that all the antenna is the only thing that is actually um, electrically, uh, electromagnetically exposed, it will be difficult to detect. Um, but then if your, your target's not suspicious, then it won't be a big problem. Because I was just thinking that, well, why don't we use an ESP32 or, or ESP8266? And then you don't actually have to physically access the device in order to pull the date, the tracking data off it. That thing can be broadcasting. But then you run into the, the risk of, you know, somebody, you know, picking up the fact that there is some RF transmission or some Ethernet or something like that going on, the random access points. But again, if your target's not suspicious, it probably won't make a big difference. Um, Listen to me talking like a, some big um, cloak and dagger guy. Um, but um, on the other hand, if you want to, um, uh, you know, leave a a, uh, a an object in the field and or attached to, mm, I don't know, let's say... A bear. You can get this onto a collar of a bear. Or you can get this... I mean, because it, it, I think it's a little big to actually use for something like a bird. I mean, it has a few grams of mass, so it's going to affect... Unless it's a big bird, like it maybe like a albatross or something like that, or a heron, but still. Um, or some sort of large-ish mammal. Uh, I don't think it would be a cumbersome on a... On a... Um, 
oh, oh what do you call it? A, um, not a beaver. What? Brain fart, totally. Um, uh, a raccoon. Like, so if you want to track where raccoons are going in your neighborhood, if you've got raccoons in your neighborhood, you can try and slap a collar around a raccoon. I mean, first of all, you'd have to get the thing immobile, but <laughs> it's possible, I suppose. Anyways, um, yeah, you, that's another. I, you, it doesn't have to be um, some human target. It could be some animal target you're trying to track. But anyways, yeah, that's the basics of putting together a, uh, a tracking device. Yeah. Now here I am just waving my hands as if it's all that easy, but I will probably get more into details about how to actually <clears throat> program, um, the nano so that it wakes up when this guy senses motion and then also how to write GPS data from the GPS onto our chip or onto our SD card and actually how to get the nano to communicate with an SD card. But yeah, um, that's all there is to that. All, all there is to that. <laughs> Should be fun to do anyways. And then, I don't know, maybe you can put it on something that you own because you're not sure where it goes and you lend it to a friend and see where they take it. Yeah, you know? That just seems creepy. It is a hacker box, after all. Okay, so we slapped together um, the circuit on the breadboard. We've got the Nano. We've got our SPI connected to um, pins 11, 12, 13, Mosey Miso serial clock. Um, and we're testing writing to the, um, the SD card. And sure enough, using the example code, we can get it to um, append to the file test.txt on the SD card. So, uh, yeah, that part's working. So it is possible to get the um, my Mublox um, software up and running on Linux. Um, run it under Wine, but you also have to um, put the serial ports in so that um, you have to make a symbolic link in your .wine slash DOS devices. Um, so ln minus s dev slash tty acm zero probably. Um, to COM1, and then you will be able to get your UP, your GPS data directly off of your Mublox. Um, I don't know why uh, the file format is incorrect when I try and upload the data from the SD card, but that seems to be an issue. But the, um, the GPS seems to be working just fine. So um, I think it might be something to do with some timing or some flakiness in the board. Uh, the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, here, you, look out. Or maybe it's static electricity from the cats, who knows. Yeah, 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 I know, you're hungry. So yeah, um, there's that.